All right, so the dust has settled. Uh, I think everybody right now has gotten to explain themselves. The community must have heard from all the parties involved in the issues going on around the game. If you haven't, go check the so-called channels of every single content creator and you will hear from them regarding the events that have just taken place in the past few days. I will not mention it in my video, but I wanted to go ahead and give a review of Warlords of New York because I feel like it is the content creator for the Division 2 thing to do. Now, believe it or not, I have actually recorded two different reviews for this patch. I did a first impressions, which was not a review. You should find that in my channel. And then I also recorded a review and then had to record a second review and then had to record this review that you're listening to, which is the third review because events have been changing and have been slightly tumultuous within the game. This review is designed solely to focus on the game, the content, and everything from my own perspective. And if you disagree, feel free to do so in the comment section. If there are things that you agree with, help me to highlight them so that we can keep the conversation going. This is not the end all and be all of the review. Wallers of New York is most likely going to take shape and change into different forms. And we're going to see a few improvements as we go on. So first of all, Warlords of New York was the patch that I kind of dreamt of. I made like 60 different videos, hoping that one day the developers will narrow their story and circle it back to New York. And guess what? It's exactly what we got. We didn't get the main Manhattan like we would have enjoyed or loved to, but we did get lower Manhattan. We got about five missions, an extension of the map, and we also got every single thing that you can actually think about going on in Washington, D.C., and much more in New York. Right now, the division game is at a place where it is at, in my opinion, a very good value for money in this current instant, not comparing it to how year one came out with a lot of the very mediocre and lackluster content that was actually put out with it. In fact, it was so bad, a lot of people have forgotten about it. No one seems to want to reference it. In that year one pass, we got some classified assignments, which are basically slight small mini missions of some kind. And we basically got access to some of the specialization weapons uh, before everybody else, or we didn't have to do some field research to unlock the specialization uh, weapons. And those were some, in my opinion, some of the benefits that we got. And then we also got seven day early access if you paid for that extent expansion. But in this expansion, if you had bought it before the release date, they were selling a little XP boost that you could have used to level your character all the way up through uh, level, um, you could just boost that character all the way through level 30 and then jump into New York whenever you felt like. Now, I currently have played this patch on two separate accounts, one without a boosted character, which is my main character, and another account with a boosted character, where I went in and I went ahead and leveled from level 30 to level 40, did all the activities in the game. So far, I've done all the legendary missions, which are very, very, uh, in my opinion, uh, difficult and, in my opinion, show some aspect of of um, not so extensive design, which I will discuss here later in a bit. I've also done all the activities that you can put in there. I've done the raid at level 40, and I just wanted to share my thoughts on the entire game as a whole. I have done some dark zone on the PVE side, but I have not done PVP, so I will leave that aspect out a little bit, the PVP side of things. So Warlords of New York really landed well, in my opinion, other than the progression bug that we saw. And <laughs> for the really huge chasm that was caused in the community by the c developers actually metting out some suspensions, I think overall we had a good package. The community may feel differently from what I do feel, but I will start to make my case as we go on. And the story, the lore, the map extension, the gear and the brand set systems and the weapon systems that were delivered, in my opinion, were a good refreshing way to play. Title Update 6 and Title Update 7 had seen us have everything on a platter. We had talents on basically every single brand set. We had gear sets that were really powerful. And so we did feel strong. We did feel like we could take on anything. But with the overhaul of gear 2.0, a lot of the community is mixed on how that all landed. But largely, I have to say, it provided for us to go back to the drawing board and approach the content slightly differently. And from my extensive testing and from watching what the community is doing, there are sufficient enough build diversity paradigms that people can work with to be able to take on the content in the game, even though the content in the game 
thus provide a little bit more difficulty than it did in the past patches, which leads me to the difficulty of the game. Many of the community members are divided about this, and in my opinion, I feel like the difficulty is right where it needs to be. And I'll say that many may disagree, but the truth is the developers had actually, in a sense, looked at a lot of the gear systems and figured out there will be the capabilities to be able to take on the different enemy types and the different difficulties, even to the point now that they're actually saying that some of the items that were actually put in the game seem too strong. If you look at, as a division player, the Fox Spirit knee pads, if you look at some of the items like the contractor gloves, one of the developers did mention on the stream that they fudged some of the mathematics and it didn't seem to work out, thereby making it too powerful. So they're going to be increasing the power levels of some items. Specifically, they mentioned one item among this batch of items are going to be improving, like the pun drunk mask, and they said they were playing with about 20% headshot damage for that. That is why I said the Division 2 is most likely going to see some improvements because of discussions like this that are going on. I think right now the game is actually in a sweet spot where everybody can actually play the game to the extent that they want the game to be in. And then when you look at some of the different missions and some of the different items that came with the package, you look at the legendary missions and this is where I will say it, take all, it takes off marks from the game. The legendary missions are actually a very good idea, but the execution, in my opinion, was just not the best way to go. There are three of them, District Union, and you get Roosevelt Island and also Capitol Building. In my estimation, the most enjoyable one to play is actually Roosevelt Island because Roosevelt Island has a big wide area for you to be able to engage the NPCs on a more lateral and wide scale combat system. When you look at the other two that are actually within building structures, all you have is a door fest camp. I have to be the first to say it. In regard to the way they've designed it, I think what they did, instead of actually adding much more to the missions and the creativity that they and Massive do have, they went for the easier route of making tanky enemies and big healing stations that heal forever. I mean, in Capitol Building, five support stations from one boss that covers the almost the entire area with each support station healing each other, if you were to maybe solve some kind of puzzle to be able to take on that boss and his minions, I would have given them kudos for it. In fact, these legendary missions make the raid look like a diamond <laughs> within the game, even though the raid does have some shortcomings. But now if you look at the raid and look at the systems in the raid compared to the systems in the legendary, I can say that the legendaries do not live up to par of the development that Massive is actually capable of. And that is my one critique with this overall package. So I'm looking forward to perhaps uh, the next raid being better or even maybe an overhaul of the legendary systems where they don't just bring hordes of enemies that cannot take enough damage, but instead bring AI programming that is actually revolutionary and might even change looter shooters or, or RPG shooters in the future. There's nothing stopping them from actually getting uh, a legendary mission where every single area you meet a named boss that is a specialist at something that you have no idea. If you imagine that, just imagine in one area you meet like perhaps a healer. That probably is a, a challenge that you have to take on. And then the next area you meet somebody that's actually good with skills who can hack your skills and you have to find ways to deal with them. And then in the next level or the next area, you meet one who is actually a commandant of different kinds of mechanic devices. And then you can just take your time and deal with these bosses who will give you a good challenge and a good run for your money. But not that every area that you go to, you meet drone controllers that are running drones that are literally on steroids hitting you at 500 damage, uh, you know, 500,000 damage a second. I don't think this was a creative move. And having beaten all three, I have to say that this is the area that I feel a little disappointed. In fact, Falcon lost from the Division 1, Claire Skies from the Division 1, um, looking at Stolen Signal from the Division 1, and even the worst of the incursions from the Division 1, Dragon's Nest, still provide better gameplay, better mechanics than the Legendary missions do. Because the Legendary missions are just all about the NPCs, and so far, it doesn't seem to meet the standard of development of in-depth missions that Massive is capable of. So that is my one major critique. Now, other than that, I have to say that everything so far is okay. I'm not saying great. I think the loot and the loot drops for the first few weeks were very, very poor. 
now that I'm making this review for a third time, the loot drops have actually started to get much more bearable in the sense that exotic weapons seem to be dropping much more than they did in the past few weeks. I have noticed that one of my characters has been able to acquire about six exotics in about one in about two days and in basically one and a half day of playing, not even two days. I mean, I played, you know, sparingly on day one and I was able to get four exotics and sparingly on the next day and I got two exotics, which made me start to wonder there might be something going on with the systems right now. Perhaps the developers have actually gone and tuned the exotic drop rates, making it better for players to have their hands on an exotic. Now, the second aspect too is the exotic changes were not necessary. From title update 6 and title update 7 and the past patches, the developers moved the exotic system to be a standard system where everybody who got an exotic got the exact same weapon with the exact same stats. This was done as a result of players saying, hey, what's the deal with the different numbers and the different stats that we're seeing? And developers said, let's move this direction. But it seems like they took that and retracted it and took a good system that was working and went back to an archaic system that was actually not good for the community, which makes me question Massive saying, they're Massive, why are your studio uh, decision makers always in the habit of going back on decisions that was once good for the community? I don't understand why they make these decisions because everything is on record and we can see it from state of the game videos, from forum posts, from Twitter posts, that they have intentions to make the game better, but then at the same time, they sabotage their systems that have actually been set in stone and systems that are actually very good. So some of these things do make for the imperfections that we see within the game. And I feel like if the developers are capable of actually just closing these gaps and leaving the things that are problematic in the game to be solved over time, then it's not a problem because a game like this has bugs, which is the other part that's going to take off marks from this entire review and it's the bugs that are some of the biggest problems in the game the bugs have caused some really strong issues within the community and even the bugs that are not causing any strong issues make for an unplayable game in many cases from console all the way through pc you will experience bugs right now one of the biggest bugs that we're experiencing is the revive bug the revive mechanic is a place where if you're downed you have a few seconds to stay alive for somebody to revive you in a very short period of time versus trying to revive you in a failed state where it takes much longer. This system bugs out from time to time and in a team where people are in urgency to pick up their teammates, somebody doesn't pick up somebody or cannot pick up somebody, that usually leads to a wipe where people cannot get in to complete their missions or complete their activities. And this is something that is frustrating for a lot of players. That is just one bug out of a whole booklet of possible and potential bugs that the team and the development team have to look into. Now, we're not gonna go ahead and speculate as to what their uh, plans and what their standards of you know testing and even proof testing is, but at least I think they probably need to start to extend their team of people that work on these systems to clean them up every time because like people say, there is no perfect game, but at least it's nice to continue to work to clean up your systems over time. And so looking at the overall game, looking at everything that was put in place, looking at the new buff to exotic drops, I think that is actually one of the better parts of the game right now. I can say that Warlords of New York is getting a 7 out of 10. The, fir the first impressions that I had, I gave it a personal 8 out of 10 and an official 6 out of 10. Personal being I'm a fanboy, I enjoy the game, and I do like the game. Uh, I critique the game, I criticize the game, but at the same time, I have to give merit for where merit is due. And so the 7 out of 10 system is based on some of the mechanics that have actually been nailed down to the T. But then the three points are big three points. They're bugs, they're loot drops, and they're also different aspects of mission design that is not showing the creativity of the, of the team and is not showing the creativity that Massive can bring to the table. And this is, these are some of the things that I'm giving my critique based on the past Division 1 game because this same studio has actually shown that they are capable of doing some really good level design, which level design in the division is 100%, 10 out of 10, pristine. Some of the best level designs that you will find, some of the best open worlds that you will find in any game because it's an Ubisoft game. Their standard is that they make their open, open world games some of the best. But this review cannot last too much longer. I don't want to bore you guys. There are so many other things that we can talk about 
And I don't, if I started talking about them, I'll probably run a 30 minute video, which is not my goal, but at least I wanted to give some kind of a review regarding the game right now. The game is not perfect, like I've said in the past, and the game is probably not ever going to be perfect. But those of us who play the game, we do so because we enjoy the game. Anyways, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed to the Gamey Daddy community, hit the subscribe button. I talk about the division. We talk about the division, me and the members of the community. And in the comment section, let me hear your thoughts. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.